It was pretty lively, pretty rowdy, uh, even without, uh, you'll see Mark Bertles' image there. He didn't make it in person to this hustings, but um, there was a lot of debate about him. Uh, there's only one full day of campaigning left in this crucial by-election. Uh, indeed, the Conservatives, we think it's crucial, Conservatives playing it down a little, little bit, having at the time of the defection said that they were going to throw the kitchen sink uh, at this campaign, uh, playing down expectations somewhat. We've seen the polls. We've seen the polls showing the UKIP ahead by uh, over 10%. Uh, but polls in localities, sometimes they can be wrong. Some of the bookies have already paid out on UKIP, but uh, there, was a, there was a good debate here. Uh, and here's something rather intriguing. Could you ever expect, in a place that the Conservatives have hold, held and held very, uh, with a large majority uh, at the last election, could you imagine them asking for the support, begging for the support even, of smaller fringe parties? Have a listen to this clip from Kelly Tolhurst, the Conservative candidate, speaking at this hustings just a few moments ago. If we don't want to have a UKIP MP on the 21st of November, you know, you've got a, you've got a choice. Um, and I just, you know, I hope that, that you can support me so that we do not have a UKIP MP on Friday the 21st of November. That's what we call tactical voting, an appeal from the Conservative candidate for mainly Labour, Green, Liberal Democrat voters to hold their nose vote for the Conservatives in order to keep out UKIP. Extraordinary stuff. Who'd have thought we'd get to that type of level? David Cameron, when he was here last week, sort of hinted at that sort of stuff uh, in an interview with the newspapers. But there we have it. Very clear, direct appeal from the Conservatives for Labour, Liberal Democrat and Green votes to keep out UKIP. The problem is, anecdotally at least, when you go onto the streets, there are quite a few people, quite a few Labour voters who are willing to tactically vote the other, round, other way around, who want to keep out the Conservatives and are willing to go UKIP for that. So tactical voting might not work. Um, pretty clear that the candidate wanted to play that card. I don't know how well that's going to go down. You could hear a bit of uh, dissent here in the audience at that idea. The Conservatives have to play this as a two-horse race. Liberal Democrats used to be very good at this. This is a two-horse race. It's, it's, it's me or them. Uh, and that's what they're trying to do here. UKIP, meanwhile, even though they weren't here in person uh, claiming the odd sort of dirty trick from a negative campaign from the Conservatives, which argued that a UKIP election would, would force horse, house prices down. Um, so still some, something to play for in this final day of campaign. Uh, we'll be reporting from here tomorrow and, of course, uh, with the results uh, in the early hours of Friday. Faisal, thanks very much. Well, let's take a look at the full list of the 13 candidates standing in the by-election there in Rochester and Stroud. You can also find it on skynews.com and, as Faisal said, we will have full and comprehensive coverage of the results as they come in with a special programme here on Sky News on Thursday night.